So we hear the ID TechX Launchpad Zone, and hi, so who are you? My name is Steve Lerner, I'm the founder and CEO of the company, and this is Michael Karst, our VP of BizDev. And uh, what, what are you showing here? I'm showing a gas sensor. As the name implies, we build uh, carbon nanotube-based gas sensors. So this is a gas sensor, which is a big, um, important thing for the future, right? Environmental monitoring, medical diagnostics, inboard uh, auto monitoring, uh, household uh, applications. Uh, there are hundreds. So uh, I've been told I shouldn't uh, talk about it, but uh, you know all this smoke that's going on, you can measure that? Of course. Well, we don't measure particles, but we can measure the Chemicals. gaseous compounds uh, within the smoke. So it's like the PM 2.5 value or something like that? PM 2.5 is an indirect measurement using our technology. If you look at PM 2.5, it's 40% uh, composed of nitric acid and ammonia. So if one were to measure those two chemical compounds on a uh, high particulate day, you can infer uh, the PM 2.5 level without having to resort to expensive uh, spectroscopic uh, methods. So um, I mean, it says right here, uh, you're doing stuff that has to do with reducing the power consumption of IoT gas sensors by 1,000 X. Is that for real? That's being generous to the incumbent technology, which is metal oxide. Um, that's what I'll be talking about tomorrow. That's running at 100% duty cycle. If we reduce that down to 2% duty cycle, we're looking at nano amps uh, or nano watt power consumption. There's no other sensor like it. Melds well with um, energy harvesting techniques, obviously increases battery life by many orders of magnitude. So it's, it's what we need to get IoT uh, embracing gas sensors more frequently. The, the metal oxide semiconductors are in the micro I'm sorry, in the milliamp range. And taking them down to the duty cycles that I mentioned earlier severely degrades the sensitivity. So how is it different from what's there? What, what do you do different? Well, we use different materials. Our, our, our fundamental mechanism is different. A metal oxide semiconductor is uh, basically a heat plate operating anywhere between 200 and 400 degrees C. We run at room temperature. We have no heating involved in the measurement process. And we're using unique material. You've heard of the nano craze 10 years ago. It's finally coming into its own after much characterization, much engineering work. We're harnessing pure semiconducting carbon nanotubes. So this is nanotechnology? This is nanotechnology. Finally, or oh, what's it called? Not finally, but uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, is it, this is a real chip right here. It's a real chip. It's real technology, and the beauty of of our approach is that it's scalable. This is not nanotechnology from a, a university lab. This is nanotechnology um, whose process is qualified in the largest semiconductor uh, fabrication centers in the world. So uh, does the, the air go into those nine holes Correct. right here? Correct. And what goes on under it? Can you try to explain? Basically we're changing the, uh, the resistivity. Sit down. Yeah, let's sit down so you can get the closer to the mic. Okay. So you, 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 you're doing what, sorry? Basically we're measuring the change of resistance yeah. in the sensing element. It's a very simple mechanism, but to um, engineer that all out to semiconductor grade processing, cleanliness, repeatability, uh, that's what hasn't been done previously. Uh, researchers had carbon nanotube gas sensors working 15 years ago, but they might find one out of a batch of a thousand. We can manufacture these with 99% yield. So it's now moving into product phase. So you have a demo? So it's in yep. here, your, your chip? The, the, uh, the chip is, the is chip? running now. This is uh, basically um, an air inlet, an air outlet, a little foil to... And the chip is in the middle there? Yeah. Yep. 
And you connect the chip to your PCB? Yeah, this is a, this is a prototype um, unit. Peripheral electronics, batteries, Bluetooth connection, and, and you're seeing uh, the chip or, or the sensing response uh, running on the uh, on the tablet, and what you see here are 22 uh, parallel elements running simultaneously. So, 22 elements. What elements? So, so this this chip is actually an array of sensors. In this particular package, uh, we have 25 sensors. Of what? Different different things. Uh, in this case, they're all the same, but they can be different things. They can be programmed to react with uh, custom molecules of interest. Custom molecules of interest. So let's say if you want to measure the pollution so is one say, thing. Yeah, let's say you want to measure uh, uh, volatile organic compounds indoors, benzene, formaldehyde. Um, other pollutants, carbon dioxide. One could program a chip for a, uh, a matrix of gases of interest on a single chip. So you just program it. It's not. It's, it's not just ones and zeros. Okay. <laughs> the programming um, methodology is composed of both chemically doping the chip and building a machine learned algorithms to recognize uh, the signal response. Uh, so you're a startup? We are. So Otherwise how we is... wouldn't be in such a luxury booth. And how soon is this going to be everywhere? As soon as someone throws us enough money to spread it all over the world. So how much do you need? 100 million? A billion? Or what's the uh, target? We're, we're, we're cheap. We're, we're looking yeah. for 5, 10 million. And that would be enough to do what? Mass production? That would be enough to fully characterize uh, several families of products. So then uh, it would go around here. It would be in all these markets. You would be able to uh, do stuff that has to do with cancer, diabetes, uh, all well, these. Each of these are a project in and of themselves. There are many, many molecules in Pollution. oncology. There are many, many molecules in outdoor air quality. What do you do with food? Food, measure spoilage, freshness. So you just uh, point at the apple and it'll tell you don't eat it? You bet. Stuff and, like that? You know, when you go to the meat counter these days, or when at least we used to in the old days, pick up a piece of meat and spell it, right? They don't like you to do that anymore. So we can just wave our cell phone over the meat. So this fish. is going to be the smartphones? That's the holy grail for 2019? us. 2019? No. No? Why <laughs> not? Why do you say no so quickly? They're, they're way too conservative. Um, the vision is to have these sensors in the phone, not only monitoring your environment, but monitoring your health. There are thousands of volatile organic compounds in your breath. Those are all telltale markers for a variety of, re of diseases. But that needs to go through FDA. That needs to be bulletproof in order to go into a cell phone. That's a lot of engineering work, hence the investment that uh, I trust you're going to find for us after um, yeah, downloading so, all this information. So right now, the people <laughs> watching, they can just contact you on the, uh, we'll if, put the contact information below the video. If they're on the West Where Coast. Where are you based? Uh, we're based in the greater Boston area in Burlington. Michael is based here in Santa Clara. And we can be anywhere that's needed. And you're going around to all the different uh, big companies and small companies and, and maybe they're coming to your booth. And we're giving a talk tomorrow. All right.